Okay, everyone, so today I'm on my way um, to the bookstore. Um, it's freaking hot, so I got my air conditioning on, and also I have my little buddy back there. He's knocked out, but he'll be joining me um, while I go get the books, so please stay tuned. Hey, okay, everyone, I am at Easton. I'm on my way to get some books. It's really nice day outside. And so, I'm enjoying this weather. <laughs> It's lovely weather, but I am on my way. Once I cross this road, so nobody hits okay, us. So I'm at the Barnes and Noble Easton, and me and my son, who is knocked out, we're about to go buy some books. So here we go. Okay, as you can see, we are at Barnes and Noble. this, love that, I need to read this, there's a lot of rage going on about this, so we'll see, <laughs> okay, also this, I'm scared to get it because I'm not sure if I'll like it, but I'm just going to have to do it. using my stroller as my little basket and cart. Let's go on the other side. Yes, thank you. Let's see here. Okay. Red bags. That's good. Which is amazing. I can't wait to see the movie. Okay. Alright. One book down. Oh, it's so hard to the store. With one hand, but I'm doing it. Ooh, homecoming. Homegoing and his inspiration. A novel, you know? As 18th century, two half sisters are born into different villages, each unaware of the other. William and Mary Englishman lead a life of comfort. Homer and Florence Arrow have these sisters, descendants through 18 generations. Hmm. I might actually get this. I might. I'll come back. I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, wait a minute. You see this? And then you see this. Okay, this is motherhood struggles slash problems. I'm going to go see if they have an elevator. If not, we're going to have to figure something out. So stay tuned. So I found an elevator. So thank God. So we can get to these books. Stay tuned. Okay, okay. So I did find the elevator. Thank God. And now I'm in the teen fiction, which it can be so, so overwhelming, but we're going to figure it out. So let's see here. Ooh, why is serious? Like your leggings. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, I definitely need to read this, but not today. I'm, I'll get that next trip. Um, okay, so I heard the rain about an ember in the ashes. Oh, and I love this cover. I usually see the ones that, oh my gosh, look at the damage. Ugh. 
I'm going to try to ignore that, but that sort of is heartbreaking. But let's see. Is this the first book? Yes, it is. So, you know what? I'm going to take the plunge and get it. Oh, hey, buddy. So, there we go. We got this book. This book. I have a feeling I might put this one away, but I'll try not to. Okay, this is the other one. This is the first one still. I like the, this one better. I really do. I like that one better. Okay, I'm putting this one away. Okay, and there's the third one. But I'm going to start out reading this one first and see how it goes. Okay, forward. On, on, on. I'm on a mission. Okay, we got adventure. Okay, I have to read this, but not today. Not today. Okay, here we go, here we go. I need to get winter. Winter, winter, winter. So I can finish the series. So winter, I have all paperback. I wonder, we should have paperback. Because all the other, other three I do have. And they just have hard copy. Oh no. I might just have to give in. Yeah. I have to get into this one. Ugh. Bothers me how they don't match up. But it'll be alright. I'm not gonna try to stress about it. Okay, let's try to move forward. Very boring. Or... Okay, here we go. Why can't miss books? I need to get to this. But as for now, I have Brightly Burning by Alexa Dawn, Winter by Marissa Meyer, and then Burning Ashes by Sabah Tahir, and Dead, uh, Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. So, I might have to cut back. But I do want to read Anger's Gift. I keep hearing a lot of things about this book. So I'm definitely going to get it. Two up today. Oh, I really wanted to get this. Heart of Iron. Because it deals with Anastasia retelling. And I love, I love the movie. The animated movie. Oh my god. What can I do? What can I do? What should I do? Get it or should I not? I already have the retelling of Jane Eyre. Do I need to stay to you? Okay, I'm about to get broke. Be broke in this trip, so I need to like restrain. Brightly burning. Okay, everyone, mission accomplished. Finally got the books that I wanted, or not really all the books I wanted, because if I did, I'd probably be broke even more. So I'm on my way back home. And I will continue this video and I'll show all the books that I have and all the books that I got. Um, so I will see you and yeah, so on my way home. <laughs> okay, so I lied. I went to another Barnes & Noble because I didn't want the hard cover of Winter. And so they have the paperback, which I went and grabbed. And I feel like I'm getting broke. My fiance is going to be mad at me. But I went and grabbed... The Darkest Minds, but I don't know. I might put it back because I don't need it right now. But I saw a Wrinkle in Time, so I'm definitely gonna get this. I haven't seen the movie yet, so I want to read the book first. So, and it's sad because I haven't read it, so I don't know anything about it. So we'll try it. Hello, BookTube world. What's up? It's your girl, Brandi Shanae. Today, I'm doing another video, and it's my TBR for July. And so, I just got home. As you know, I traveled to two Barnes & Nobles because they didn't have 
<laughs> the paperback of Winter from the Lunar Chronicles. So I had to get the paperback because I didn't want a hardcover and the rest of the paperback. That's just like, no, not going to work. So today I'm going to show you my ambitious ugh, TBR for July. So get ready. Okay. So my first book is Dear Martin. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I really just finished reading this today and it's uh, July the 3rd. So I started this, um, my, uh, no, Sunday and I just finished it today. So, I mean, it's July, so it still counts, right? But um, this is Dear Martin by Nick Stone. Um, let me give you a synopsis of what it's about. And it says, Justice McAllister is top of his class at Browsman Prep, captain of the debate team, and set for an Ivy League school next year. But none of that matters to the police officer who just put him in handcuffs. He's eventually released without charges or an apology, but the incident rattles him. Despite leaving his rough neighborhood, he can't seem to escape the scorn of his former peers or the attitude of his new classmates. The only exception, Sarah Jane, Justice's gorgeous and white debate partner he wishes he didn't have a thing for. Justice has studied the teacher teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., but do they hold up now? He starts a journal to, to Dr. King to find out. Then Justice goes driving with his best friend Manny, windows rolled down, music turned up, way up. <sighs> Much to the fury of the white off-duty cop beside them. Words fly shots fired and justice and manny are caught in the crosshairs in the media fallout it's justice who's under attack and so far and so this is a very good book um you have to read this by nick stone it's a great book i'll be i've already read it but it still counts as my tbr so yes next book is tiger lily which i've just started today i'm on page do, 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 do. Okay, I'm on page 23, so not that far. But Tiger Lily is by uh, Jody Lynn Anderson. And so far, it's most likely a real t retelling of Peter Pan, except you're mostly going to get something from uh, Tiger Lily's perspective and everything like that. And as I read it for the, p the couple of pages, it's more darker version than the Peter Pan we know. Unless you go into the movie Pan, which is a more darker version, I guess you could say. But still, this is more into the Peter Pan animated version I guess you could say but um, let me give you the synopsis of what this is about and it says when 15 year old Tiger Lily meets a luring teenage Peter deep in the forbidden woods the two form a bond that's impossible to break but also impossible to hold on to as the leader of the Lost Boys the most fearsome of Neverland's inhabitants Peter is an unthinkable match for Tiger Lily with her betrothal to another man and deadly enemies threatening to t tear them apart the lovers seemed doomed but it's the arrival of Wendy Darling, an English girl who's everything Tiger Lily is not, that leads Tiger Lily to discover that the most dangerous enemies lurk inside even the most loyal and loving heart. So, gotta read this book. I love this book so far. And so this is definitely something everyone should read, especially if you're a Peter Pan fan. So, gotta got check this out. So, can't wait to read more of it. Next book is an ARC, my first ARC oh, that I received, um, and it's Sadie from, and it's by, of course, Courtney Summers, and I've heard so much about this. I was, like, so happy when I went in the mail, and I was like, oh, I got an ARC, my first ARC ever, so round of applause real quick. Okay, anyways, so in the first part, it says, if she dies, she takes the truth with her. Um, and so obviously since it's an arc, it really doesn't give you a whole thing about what it's about so far. Um, but it's usually from what I gathered, it's, um, she goes off searching for something and she sees this guy or whatever. It's a thriller. I don't really know much about it, but I know that, um, it comes out, um, this September. So everybody look out for this book, um, Courtney Summers. And the very first page, it says, if she dies, she takes the truth with her. So I'm definitely excited about this, especially this being my first arc and all. Um, I heard great things about Sadie, so I'm looking forward to reading this. Okay, the next book 
um, that I'm actually going to be buddy reading with with um, with uh, beautifully bookish Bethany and a few other people um, and and we, we're actually on Boxer so I'm excited to start that this coming Monday we'll be starting the group so I'm excited and the, of course yeah. I am late on this. I'm sorry. I am super late starting this. Please don't judge me. But the book that we're going to be buddy reading this is <laughs> An Ember in the Ashes by Sabat uh, to here. And I've heard so much about this. I've seen this on many um, book hauls in the booktube world and uh, TBRs. And I was like, you know what? I got to get with the program and just go ahead and read this book. And of course, I'm going to read the synopsis or at least the back to explain for those who haven't read it what it's about. And so it says, Leia is a slave. I, uh, I can't, is it is Elias? 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 I don't know. Elias is a soldier. Uh, neither is free. And it says, under the martial empire, defines his myth with death. Laia and um, her family do not challenge the empire. They've seen what happens to those who do. But when Laia's brother is arrested for treason, she is forced to make a decision. In exchange for help from rebels who promise to rescue her brother, she will risk her life to spy for them from within the empire's greatest military academy. There, Laia meets Elias sorry if it's wrong Elias the school's finest soldier and secretly is mo it's most unwilling he and Lyle will soon realize that their destinies are <coughs> intertwined and that their choices will change the fate of the empire itself so I'm definitely gonna re I'm definitely excited about reading this um I don't know what to say like obviously I looked at there was different covers it has the white one with the you know with Laya on the front but I actually like this better it looks cool to, more cooler to me um so yeah and then of course the second book is a torch against the night which after we read, the, read this maybe we can buddy up and read the second one together we'll see um but yes I am going to be buddy reading with uh beautifully bookish Bethany so I'm sure you all know her um I love her I love her a channel but yes so can't wait to start this Monday okay the next book that I'm going to be reading is Anger is a Gift. And this is my uh, Mark, Osh Mark Oshiro. I hope I hope I said his last name right. I'm sorry if I didn't. But um, let me read you the synopsis of this book. And um, like, I just love the cover first off. And then, of course, it's blue. Blue is my favorite color. And then it has the orange. Look at that. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I love hardcover books. But I mean, if you don't got a lot of money and the paperback's out, what can you do, right? Get the paper book, paperback. <laughs> but let me read you the synopsis and tell you what it's about. And so it says, most Moss Jeffries is many things. Considerate student, devoted son, loyal friend, and affectionate boyfriend, enthusiastic nerd. But sometimes Moss still wishes he could be someone else, someone without panic attacks, someone whose father was still alive, someone who hadn't become a rallying point for a community because of one horrible night. And most of all, he wishes he didn't feel so stuck. Moss can't even escape at school. He and his friends are subject to the lack of funds and crumbling inf infrastructure at West Oakland High, as well as constant intimidation by the resource officers stationed in their halls. It feels sometimes that the students are treated more like criminals. Something needs to change, but who will listen to a group of teens? With tensions hit a fear pitch and tragedy strikes again, Moss must face a difficult choice, give in to fear and hate or realize that anger can actually be a gift. And so I'm really excited about this book. Um, I'm just, especially what's been happening in the world, but I will come back to that subject in a moment, but I'm looking forward to reading it. Next book is, <laughs> I'm late on this one too, so please don't judge me, is Tyler Johnson Was Here, and this is by Jay Coles. I got this in Target, as you can see. But um, I read so, I heard so much about this book, and let me read you the synopsis of this book as well. Um, it says, <laughs> look at it, uh, it says, Tyler equals a bad dude. Tyler equals bright and loving. Tyler equals my brother who was killed. When Mar Marvin Johnson's twin Tyler goes to a party, Marvin decides to take along to keep an eye to tag along to keep an eye on his brother. But what starts as harmless fun turns into a shooting followed by a police raid. The next day, Tyler has gone missing and it's up to Marvin to find him. 
but when Tyler is found dead, a video is leaked online that tells a chilling story. Tyler had been shot and killed by a police officer. Officer, Terrified as his mother unravels and mourning a brother who is now ha hashtag, Marvin must learn what justice and freedom really mean. Tyler Johnson was here is a striking and heartbreaking account of, of police brutality and current race relations in modern America. And... <sighs> And it's crazy because the books I've been reading, especially like The Hate You Give, it starts from a party of a shooting. And, you know, that's, it's crazy. But that's usually how, I, what happens mostly. People like, you know, like neighbors complain of the loud music, and then you got the police come in, pull you over, all that, that's, all that's bad stuff. But this is, I'm definitely looking forward to this. And let me see. It's like a tannish, tannish purplish color, I think. I don't know but I like this it's it's simple and simple is always you know it's not always bad so definitely gonna love this read especially I read the hate you give and of course I just finished dear Martin so I'm really looking forward to this and of course you got anger is a gift which is all of them are related to the same uh, tragedies and and the issues happening in America's day and then the next is a book that I guess is not even out in America yet, or at least it's not in American bookstores. So I had to order this from Amazon. It was on there. And this it is uh, by Louise O'Neill. It's The Surface Breaks. Um, it's a reimagining of um, of The Little Mermaid. I definitely, I just wanted to get this book. Just look at it. It's gorgeous, okay? All right, and Little Mermaid, I gotta be honest with you, I love The Little Mermaid. Um, <laughs> when I watched that book well I watched that book lord when I watched the movie it motivated me to swim and then once I learned to swim I went on the swim team and everything like that yes like literally went on the swim team because I love to swim and I would like literally when I would swim I was I was seeing part of your world so that's how like obsessive I was over that movie which I really love and this book I had to get it but let me give you the synopsis of what this is about as well. It says, deep beneath the cold, stormy sea, Gaia is a mermaid who dreams of freedom from her controlling father. On her first swim to the surface, she is drawn towards a human boy. Gaia longs to join his carefree world, but how much will she have to sacrifice? Hmm, what will it take for the little mermaid to find her voice? So... It's definitely, I will say this is also from a, a more feminist perspective as well. So I'm definitely interested in reading this because I never like, hmm, feminist perspective. Interesting. And then gotta see this. Oh, it's like fish scales. Oh, love it. And it's like blue. So, come on, you know, like I said, blue's my favorite color. Everybody's getting with the program with blue. Yes, blue. Go blue. Okay. So the next book that I went to a second Barnes and Noble to get <laughs> is Winter from the Lunar Chronicles. Um, I'm really excited to finish Lunar Chronicles to find out what happens. Yes, especially since Scarlet is stuck in lunar, Luna um, with Winter. So I'm very excited about this book. Um, let me read the back for you for those who haven't read it and what it's about. Um, can Cinder, Scarlet, Crest, and Winter defeat Lavana and find their happily ever afters? Princess Winter is admired by the lunar people for her grace and kindness and despite the seers that mar her face, her beauty is said to be even more breathtaking than that of her stepmother, Queen Lavana. Winter despises her stepmother and knows Lavana won't approve of her feelings for her childhood friend, the handsome palace guard, Jason. But Winter isn't as weak as Lavana believes her to be, and she's been undermining her stepmother's wishes for years. Together with the cyborg mechanic Cinder and her allies, Winter might even have the power to launch a revolution and win a war that's been raging for far too long. So I'm so excited about this book. Um, also, someone, I forget who said it, but they said that Fer uh, Ferris was good. Um, and I think The Stars Above. Um, I'm really still debating if I'm going to get those books because I kept seeing like mixed reviews some saying it was not that good and it was no point and some saying that it was really good so I'm still debating on that but I'm definitely gonna be reading it reading this this month and nothing's gonna stop me next book I've been I've had this book for a while and I've I've been like 
up and down about it because I've literally been seeing people reviewing about this book and they did not like it and I'm like oh my gosh am I gonna like this book and I'm like okay I need to get a better perspective of for myself and see if I like it and of course it's Fury Born uh, by Claire Legrand and as you know um, like I said I heard mixed reviews about this book um, let me read the synopsis so to let you know for those who haven't read it to see what it's about it says two young women centuries apart hold the power to either save their world or doom it when assassins ambush her best friend the crown prince riel i don't know Dar dardine eh, hopefully i didn't like mess up that name um it says risks everything to save him exposing her ability to perform all seven kinds of elemental magic the only people who should possess this power are a pair of prophecy queens um a queen of light and a queen of blood to prove she is sun queen Riel must endure seven trials to test her magic. If she fails, she will be executed unless the trials destroy her first. A thousand years later, the legend of Queen Riel is a mere fairy tale to bounty hunter Eliana Fer Ferracora, I think. <laughs> when the Undying Empire conquered her kingdom, she embraced violence to keep her family safe. Now she believes herself untouchable until her mother vanishes. To find her, Eliana joins a rebel captain on a dangerous mission and discovers that the evil at the heart of the Empire is more terrible than she ever imagined. As Riel and Eliana fight in a cosmic war that spans millennia, their stories intersect and the shocking connections between them will ultimately determine the fate of their world and of each other. So it sounds good, but then I'm trying to figure out like how how is it going to work like in this book? Um, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes. Um, but I do love this cover. It's really cool. Um, and then they got the red, which is pretty good. Nice, vibrant red. So like that, but love it so far. And as far as, okay, so this is sort of off topic as far as my ambitious July TBR, but I wanted to get more in touch with some issues um, that been there has been on my mind and so as you know I have Dear Martin, Anger is a Gift, and Tyler Johnson was here. All three of them have one thing in common and that's about police, police brutality and police shootings um, in America today. Um, it really bothers me, especially a couple weeks ago, Antoine Rose uh, was killed by a police officer in um, Philadelphia, I believe. I believe Philadelphia, yeah. And it, I cried because that's another young boy that will, you know, that could have changed the world or anything like that. And so I thought to myself, like, I have a son and I have a daughter. I have to raise them a certain way just because of what's been happening, police, police brutality and shootings and all those other things and um, police assaulting women out of their cars and dragging them on the ground and, and all that stuff. And it's sad that um, we have to, you know, go through this today. And like, since I read Dear Martin, I wanted to bring up one of the one I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm reading it out, out of the book because I know some people haven't read it but I wanted to read at least two of the letters um that Justice had written to Martin Luther King um and it says dear Martin aka Dr. King first and foremost please know I mean no disrespect with the whole Martin thing I studied you and your teachings for a project in 10th grade so it feels most natural to interact with you as a homie Hope you don't mind that. Quick intro, my name is Justice McAllister. I'm a 17 year old high school senior and full scholarship student at Brazelton Preparatory Academy in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm ranked fourth in my graduating class of 83. I'm the captain of the, of the debate team. I scored a 1560 and a 34 on my SATs and ACTs respectively. And despite growing up in a bad area, not too far from your old stomping grounds, I have a future ahead of me that will likely include an Ivy League education and eventual law degree and a career in public policy. Sadly, during the wee hours of this morning, literally none of that mattered. Long story short, 
I tried to do a good deed and wound up on the ground in handcuffs. And despite the fact that my ex-girl was visibly drunk off her ass, excuse, excuse my language, I apparently looked so menacing in my prep school hoodie, the cop who cuffed me called for backup. The craziest part is while I thought everything would be cool as soon as our as her parents got there, no matter what they told the cops, these dudes would not release me. Mr. Taylor offered to call my mom, but the cops made it clear that since I'm 17, I'm considered an adult when placed under arrest, aka there was nothing mama could do. Mr. Taylor would wound up calling my friend SJ's mom, Miss Friedman, an attorney, and she had to come bark a bunch of legal hoo-ha in the cops' faces before they'd undo the handcuffs. By the time they finally let me go, the sun was coming up. It'd been hours, Martin. Mrs. F didn't say a whole lot as she drove me to my dorm, but she made me promise to go by the infirmary and get some cold packs for my swollen wrists. I called my mama to tell her what happened, and she said she'll file a complaint first thing in the morning, but I doubt it'll do any good. Frankly, I'm not real sure what to feel. Never thought I'd be in this kind of situation. There was this kid, Shamar Carson, black dude, my age, shot and killed in Nevada by the white cop back in June. The details are hazy since there weren't any witnesses, but what's clear is this cop shot an unarmed kid. Four times, even fishier according to the medical examiners, there was a two hour gap between the estimated time of death and when the cop called it in. Before the incident last night, I hadn't really thought much about it. There's a lot of conflicting information, so it's hard to know what to believe. And I'll just scroll down like here it says, um, I don't know, I've seen some pictures of Shamar Carson and he did have kind of a thuggish appearance. In a way, I guess I thought I really need to concern myself with this type of thing because compared to him, I don't come across as threatening, you know? I don't sag my pants or wear my clothes super big. I go to a good school and have goals and vision and a great head on my shoulders, as mama likes to say. Yeah, I grew up in a rough area but I know I'm a good person or a good dude Martin I thought if I made sure to be a, an upstanding member of society I'd be exempt from the stuff those black guys deal with you know really hard to swallow that that I was wrong all I can think now is how different would things have gone had I not been a black guy I know initially the cop could only go by what he saw which probably did seem a little sketchy but I've never had my character challenged like that before Last night changed me. I don't want to walk around all pissed off and looking for problems, but I know I can't continue to pretend nothing's wrong. Yeah, there are more colored that water. There are no more colored water fountains, and it's supposed to be illegal to discriminate. But I, but if I can be forced to sit on the concrete in two tight cuffs when I've done nothing wrong, it's clear there's an issue that things aren't as equal as folks say they are. I need to pay more attention, Martin. Start really seeing stuff and writing it down. Figure out what to do with it. That's why I'm writing to you. You faced way worse. I mean stuff than sitting in handcuffs for a few hours, but you stuck to your guns. Well, your lack thereof, actually. I want to try to live like you. Do what you do. See where it gets me. My wrists are killing me, so I have to stop writing now. But thanks for hearing me out. And these are, that's just one of the letters that he reads to, you know, that he writes to Martin Luther and that's just very you know just sad to me because it's the truth like all these black young men and um and even just black grown men in general they have done nothing wrong and yet they're being killed left and right by police officers and I just and it's heartbreaking to me just really and, and it just it just makes me like fear I, sh I shouldn't live in you know in fear but I fear for my kids today because I don't, you know, it's just like, I don't know. But anyways, enough of that. But um, this was my TBR for June. A very ambitious TBR, actually. And I look forward to reading everything. Um, please give me a thumbs up, please, if you really like this video. Um, also subscribe so you can hear more from me and see more videos from me also with what I was just talking about police brutality and stuff like that I will be talking more about it um, as well so if you like I said if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you have any questions for me or anything like that regarding this video or how I feel about police, police brutality or or if you have comments or anything about this video please just
let me know i'm always on my phone looking at what you know the comments and stuff and replying back to everybody um so please just give me a thumbs up subscribe do whatever you like to do just please tell me what you think about this video thank you so much for watching booktube love you guys can't wait to hear from you see ya